This is a tutorial on the graphs of rational functions. A rational function is just a function that we can divide into two functions, one in the numerator and one in the denominator. An example of a rational function would be f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over x minus 7. Our numerator function, or our p of x, would be x squared plus 3x plus 2. Our denominator function, q of x, well that's just x minus 7. Now what's important to realize about rational functions is that because we have a variable in our denominator, then our domain is restricted because our denominator can never be equal to zero. If our denominator is equal to zero, then we're dividing by zero and that would make this function undefined. So again, the domain of a rational function is always restricted where q of x cannot equal zero. Or, in this example, x minus seven cannot equal zero. Now I can solve this inequality, I would just add seven to both sides, and I would get x cannot equal seven. So the domain of this example function then would be all real numbers except x could not equal seven. Because if x did equal seven, our denominator would be zero, and this rational function would not make any sense. So now let's talk about the graphs of rational functions. The graph of a rational function can look many different ways. Let's look at our first example. We have y is equal to x squared plus three x minus four all over x minus one. The graph of this rational function is a straight line, and it's given to us right here. But notice that there's this open circle here where x is equal to one. This open circle, or this hole in our graph, comes from our denominator. Notice in our denominator we have x minus one. And our denominator cannot equal zero, which means x minus one cannot equal zero. And if I were to add one to both sides of this inequality, I would find out that x cannot equal one. So even though this is a graph of a straight line, we have this hole in our graph because our domain is restricted by our denominator. Now let's look at our next example. Here we have a graph that looks somewhat like a reciprocal function on the left and right ends but in the middle we have this S-shaped. Well, let's look at our function. We have four x over x squared minus nine. And looking at our denominator, we know that this cannot equal zero, which means x squared minus nine cannot equal zero. And I can factor x squared minus nine into x plus three times x minus three. And again, this cannot equals zero, which means x cannot equal three, and x cannot equal negative three. And I got that just using the zero product property and solving for each of these binomials. If one of them equals zero, then it doesn't matter what the other one equals because you're just multiplying it by zero. So if x cannot be equal to three, and x cannot be equal to negative three, that means our domain is restricted at those two points. So let's look a little bit closer at this graph. Notice that this graph has vertical asymptotes at x is equal to negative three and x is equal to positive three. These are points on the graph that our graph approaches but can never cross or touch. And these asymptotes come from the restrictions on our domain from our denominator. So if vertical asymptotes come from the restrictions in our domain that come from our denominators, let's try to find the vertical asymptotes of these two rational functions. Our first one is y is equal to x minus four times x plus one, all divided by x plus three times x minus one. Now our vertical asymptotes come from our restricted domain, and our restricted domain comes from when our denominator is equal to zero. 
So if we want to find our vertical asymptotes, we're just going to take our denominator, x plus 3 times x minus 1, and we're going to say that this is equal to 0. Now I have two binomials here that are multiplied together. So I can use the zero product property, since these are equal to zero, and I can solve them individually. I'll have x plus 3 is equal to zero and x minus 1 is equal to zero. If I subtract 3 from both sides in the first equation, I'll find out that x is equal to negative 3. And if I add 1 to both sides in our second equation, I find out that x is equal to 1. So my domain is restricted when x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 1. And that also means that my vertical asymptotes are the lines x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 1. Now let's look at our next example. We have y is equal to x minus 5 times x plus 1. And that's all over x plus 1. Now we want to find the vertical asymptote of this rational function. And again, our vertical asymptotes come from when our denominator is equal to zero. So I take my denominator and I say x plus one is equal to zero. If I subtract one from both sides, I'll get x is equal to negative one. So my vertical asymptote for this rational function is when x is equal to negative one. Now let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. Many rational functions have a horizontal asymptote, but many do not. To figure out whether your rational function has a horizontal asymptote, you have to look at the two functions that make up your rational function. So for example, if I had f of x is equal to px over q of x, and I said p of x was equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2, and I said q of x was equal to 2x minus 1. Well then to figure out if this rational function has a horizontal asymptote, I need to look at two different things. I need to look at the degree of my two functions. And the degree is just the largest power on a variable in this function. So the degree of my numerator is 2 and the degree of my denominator is 1. Now if the degree of my numerator, p of x, is less than the degree of my denominator, or q of x, then there is a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. This is the x-axis. If the degree of p of x and q of x are the same, if they're equal, then there's a horizontal asymptote at the line y is equal to a over b, where a and b are the leading coefficients of p of x and q of x. Now, if I rewrote my example equation here, and my denominator was 2x squared, then these would have the same degree. They'd both have a degree of 2. So my horizontal asymptote is the ratio of our leading coefficients. And the leading coefficient is just the coefficient on the term with the square in this case, or the one with the highest power. My leading coefficient on my p of x is 1. The leading coefficient on q of x is 2. So this example problem, we would have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 1 over 2, or y is equal to 1 half. Now the last rule you're going to have to memorize is that if the degree of p of x, or the degree of our numerator, is greater than the degree of our denominator, or greater than q of x, then the rational function has no horizontal asymptote. So if our rational function was x cubed over x squared plus 1, because the degree of our numerator is 3 and the degree of our denominator is 2, well 3 is greater than 2, so this rational function would have no horizontal asymptote.
So let's find the horizontal asymptotes of these rational functions. Our first one is y is equal to 4x squared plus 12x minus 16 all over 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. Now the first step is to look at the degree of both the numerator and the denominator. Our numerator has a degree of 2. Our denominator also has a degree of 2. So since my numerator and my denominator have the same degree, then my horizontal asymptote is the line y is equal to a over b. And a and b are just the leading coefficients of both the numerator and the denominator. So my a is 4 and my b is 2. So I would have y is equal to 4 over 2 or my horizontal asymptote is the line y is equal to 2. Now let's look at our next example. We have y is equal to 4x squared minus x plus 10 all over x minus 2. The degree of my numerator is 2. The degree of my denominator is 1. So my numerator has a higher degree than my denominator. And whenever your numerator has a higher degree than your denominator, then this rational function has no horizontal asymptotes.